So we are going to consider and see how we are supposed to attempt this typical question on our DC machines from the question paper, which was written in August 2016. Uh, that is, uh, we're going to work with the first part, question 1.3, which is on the calculations. Let us see what we are given there. Let us see. We are given there, it's a six pole, lip wound, 335 volts, shunt, excited DC machine draws an amateur current off, draws, it draws, it is not supplying, it is drawing the, the current into. So what type of a machine is this which draws in the current? We are talking about a DC motor in that case. Remember, a generator supplies the current, while least a motor takes in or draws in the current. All right, so they were given uh, the amateur current at um, on no load. Okay, that is on no load, which is at this one. When loaded, it draws an amateur current of 65 amps from the supply and runs at still the same speed, 1,500 revolutions per minute. The resistance of the amateur circuit uh, is, and there are 1,200 amateur conductors. All right, this is a shunt uh, excited DC motor. Remember, guys, your sketch, I talked about this, so you're not going to worry about this one. Just have to recall uh, the sketch of your motor, which is a shunt motor where the shunt field is in parallel to the armature circuit, which is uh, uh, of this nature, right? The way we have got our armature, and this is the power output. You have got the input power, the voltage. It draws in the load current. Then we've got the shunt current, into the armature current there we have got uh, the emf which is generated as the b as the back emf there the the shunt field resistance know everything just know your diagrams all right so anyways we are told that uh it's a six pole so remember i told you from the pair pole from the six pole you can determine the pair poles if you divide by two so dividing by two our pair poles Six divided by two, that was going to be a three. Then it's a lap wound. Remember, a lap, C is equal to two P. This is a lap. If it is a wave, C is just going to be a two. But uh, if it is uh, a lap like this, it's going to be two P, which is two times pair poles. Our pair poles, remember, we've got three pairs. So two times three, that is a six. 335 volt, that is the voltage, 335 volts. It's a shunt excited, as we talked about. It draws an amateur current off. So it is drawing an amateur current of 8,25 amps, which is on no load. There is no load there. At a speed of 1,000 revolutions per minute, which is revs per minute. But we are given another condition when loaded. It's another part. When loaded, it draws an amateur current off. So there we are given another condition, an amateur current of 65 amps, which is taken at a speed of 1,500 revolutions per minute again, but this time when loaded. This time when loaded. The resistance of the armature circuit being 0 0,4. So they were given everything about the armature circuit, its resistance are 0 0,4 ohms, uh, there are 1,200 amateur conductors that we are given, 1,200 conductors. Okay? Calculate. Not just to calculate, but when loaded. Understand the question. You're not just calculating. No, no, no. 
It's not just to calculate. You are calculating when this DC machine, which is our DC motor, is loaded. So whatever that you're going to calculate here on these questions, there is an instruction when loaded. So meaning to say, when it is not loaded, this is useless now. In this question, it is useless. There is no way we are going to use it. You see? So be careful on your information. So that was your data, but it's now it's no longer important because they are saying when loaded, that is where we are supposed to calculate these 1.31 the generated EMF. I have the pair poles, this and that. So I'm going to think of the two formulas to calculate the generated EMF. From the specific EMF equation or from our normal EMF equation. Okay. So the question is, am I having everything on this formula? We never talked about the flux there. And they actually need it, the useful flux per pore. Actually, we had a question like this. I think that was the example, the example that we had. Like, it was not an example, but the first exercise, it's a similar question. I see this one, very, very similar. So I'm not going to waste much time on this one. We do not have the flux there. So the second formula was going to be the best, where E is going to be V minus, remember, this is a motor. The back EMF, you subtract the amateur current times what? Times uh, the amateur resistance, which is everything about uh, the amateur circuit that you are given, and you are just given the amateur resistance, only them. So that is what you're going to have. And in this case, everything is properly our provided. We are not going to have challenges in calculating this. We have got everything. The voltage is already there. 335 minus the amateur current is already there when loaded. Then uh, the amateur resistance, the circuit of our amateur circuit, uh, this circuit, it has got a resistance of 0 0.4, everything in our amateur circuit. Remember, it's a DC motor. You subtract. If it was a generator, you add. So that's why you see your formula. There's a plus or minus. I talked about that. Uh, on the first exercise. So make sure that you do understand your formula sheet because that is the only thing that you're gonna have as your assistance in the exam. All right, so if you were to simplify this uh, properly, uh, we are going to obtain 309. So this is 309 volts. So this is your generated EMF uh, when loaded. Then 1.32, Still, when loaded, what is going to be the useful flux per pore? We saw that there is a generated EMF formula that we could have used where the flux is. So we can take advantage of that since we have calculated the generated EMF using this formula. But also we can see that the generated EMF can be calculated again from that formula. So we can use it to calculate the speed. What is it that we have? All right, let us consider 1.32, the generated EMF. Remember, it can also be calculated from 2P uh, N times the number of amateur conductors times the flux over 60C, provided this is in revolutions per minute. So the question is to calculate the useful flux. This is what you want. So you can cross multiply this and that. We did this cross multiplication in the previous exercise. So that is one times this other side is going to be two pi n z flux is equal to 60 C times E. Since I need the flux, I'm going to divide by everything on this side, which means I'm going to divide by two P n z. So it will be 60 C E over this two P n z. So I'm going to divide by everything that I'm seeing there. Just ignore this flux only. So it's going to be two P n z. So this is the right formula that we can use to calculate the useful flux per pore, which is measured in Weber's. So it is just a matter of uh, substituting into the formula. That is 60 times C. Remember, it's a lap. 
So that is going to be a 6 times the generated EMF, which we just calculated now, which is uh, 309. So that's 309. Uh, then you're going to divide to 2 times the pair poles. The pair poles that you're given is 3 pairs. So in this case, we've got uh, 3 pairs. All right. There's 3 pairs times the speed which is when loaded 1,500 revolutions per minute, the number of amateur conductors given as 1,200, we are given this. So that is it. You are going to uh, obtain the UC for flux per pole. And that was going to give us 0 0.0103 Webers. Like I said before, if you wanted to convert these to milliwebers, you just multiply by 10 to the exponent of 3. All right? By 10 to the exponent of 3, you get your answer in milliwebers. That is, it's a choice if you want to do it like that. Then the last part of our question was the useful torque in this case developed by the machine in Newton meters. The useful torque. I talked about this formula. And I'm going to talk about this again. The token that we have, as guys, I said, as long you have used this formula, the second formula, this one for the generated EMF, to calculate anything, whether it is to calculate the generated EMF, whether it is to calculate the speed, the, whatever that you are given on the, as long this formula you have used it, it means you can also use this formula to calculate the torque because everything that you have here is on this formula. So if you have used it before, it means that is the best formula to calculate the torque. And as you can see, we used this formula before here. We used it. So meaning to say that formula can also be used as long this formula has been used that formula can be used. That is the guarantee whenever you are answering exam and you've got uh, a talkie on the other part. Consider that con uh, condition that I'm saying right now. So from the formula, it's a straightforward formula. It reads 0 0.318 uh, times we've got the amateur current over C times Z times the pair poles times the useful flux per pole. So this will give us uh, the torque in Newton meters. That's it. So that will be 0 0.318 times the amateur current. Already we have got it uh, 65 over C. Remember you'll see there six is just substituting Z, the amateur conductors, 1,200 times the pair poles. Remember we have got uh, three pairs. And the useful flux is the one that we calculated here. Uh, remember here we got our useful flux as uh, 0 0.0103 0 Webers. So with this, we are going to obtain the useful torque. And that was going to give us 127.7406 uh, and so on, which is going to be 741 to three decimal places if you round off to three decimal places Newton meters. That is the torque. These questions, they do repeat. So if you understand your basics, you're going to see that you're not going to have a challenge on the final exams. Do as many questions as you can. More to come from Mason African Motives till we meet again.